Key. You ready? Peace, peace, this is Just Blaze, and I'm teaming up with the sneaker designer to the stars, Caddy Customs, and we're making one-of-one one shoes for some of the most iconic names in our culture. Our guest today has innovated since his early days with the At Band Clan up to the present day, playing the Super Bowl and the Pyramids with the Black Eyed Peas. He's a forward-thinking visionary, and you can see that in everything he does. From his work as a solo and group artist, to his production, his songwriting, and his many ventures in the tech space. Can Caddy and I step into the future with this sneaker? Will we be able to impress somebody who's designed cars for Mercedes and Tesla? Let's find out. Welcome to Fresh Pit. Well, I am, ladies and gentlemen. Please, yeah. make some noise. Wow, ah, thank you, Just Blaze. How you Hello. doing? Good to see you. Good to see you, too. Wow, that's dope. No, Will, we appreciate you being here. Bro, oh, yeah. no, it's, a, it's an honor to be here. Yeah. No, it's an honor to be sitting in your presence. Absolutely. For a lot of reasons Absolutely. that we're going to get into. Okay. Absolutely. Wait, shoot chat, shoot chat, yeah. shoot, shoot chat, shoot chat. Jordan what 15. you got on? What you got? What's these? Oh, these is Rick Owens. Is... Oh, those is nice. Yeah. Futuristic look. Yo, you got the Back to the Future. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Just a little... Mm -hmm. like, Ooh. 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 I call these the Mortgage Fives. <laughs> Sort of, for real, for real. Like, I see those on the internet. They be like, buku expensive. Yeah, <laughs> stupid. I'm like, I'm, I'm looking Dude, at them. Dude, those like, is dope, speed. bro. This is, like, this is nothing. This is nothing. Compared to what you have done, this is nothing. Let's talk about it. Absolutely. <laughs> what? So basically with this shoe, we want this shoe to be you. You know mm. what I mean? We know that you're a futuristic guy. You know what I mean? Like, you're just all around different. You know, we want this shoe to, to be you. Something that you would enjoy looking at as, as well as wearing them. You ready? Yo, these are stupid fresh. Stupid fresh, right? Yo, what the what? And we was trying to catch that Afro futuristic look to them, including with your logos and everything, the Nike switch on the side and the bag glow in the dark. He's officially the most expensive yes. guest we've ever yes. had. Yes, yes, <laughs> You got the light ups on it? Yes. Wow, these is crazy dope. People don't understand having something this sleek, this dope, they don't understand what that represents. Like for you, we, you were one of the hardest guests because we wanted to celebrate your history, but we love the fact that you always look towards the future. Right. Mm. Through so many of your ventures. That's what do you was. do for Will I Am? He can literally Ooh. buy himself and make himself anything. Yes. <clears throat> Not anything. <laughs> <laughs> but. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I like. I like to collaborate right. and solve problems. Nice. And, you know, just surround myself with different disciplines. So, and when you do that, you can pretty much do anything and solve any problem. The world of creation is, is large. Right. It's right. so vast. Right. And so I, I, I like to hunt and, and, and surround myself with different types of talent. It started with just making beats. Okay. Right. What'd, what'd you start out on? It was a, uh, a Sony S550, which is like a computer. Wow. Okay. I don't know if you remember you, that. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, these disc and floppies. Like mm -hmm. the, sample, the sample computer was here, the programming computer was there, and that was just like, it took a long time. Right. right. And so then some, um, the guy that taught me how to produce, his name is DJ Motivate, he was like, yo, Will, I'm gonna get the SP1200. I was like, what? Like Primo's? Right. He was like, yeah, like Primo's. I'm like, oh man. So then I got it. I'm like, what do you mean we can't sample that long of a sample? Right. He was like, yeah, but I'm gonna get that Akai. I'm like, wait, like 30 seconds? Right. <laughs> so then he got the Akai. And then MPC 3000 came out. Game changer. Everybody was like, yo, I wanna get that MPC 3000. Right. So wow. we were blessed as a crew to have an MPC 3000 right. back in 1993. Was that like with the keyboard too, or was it just like no, the pads, pads. all the pads, okay, 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 all the okay, pads, okay. Okay. with the flip little thing on and the side, and it changed colors and, and all that. <laughs> Shout okay, out to okay, Roger okay. Lynn, okay. thank you, Roger. Yeah, <laughs> and so from that, there was he's like, yo, well, there's this guy in Burbank, his name is uh, he programmed for Lynn. I'm like, who, wait, you know somebody that programmed program what beats? He was like, no, <clears throat> he programmed the computer system for the Lynn 100. His name is Bruce Forat. 
So I was like, yo, let's go meet Bruce Forat. <laughs> so I drive out to freaking Burbank and I'm like, yo, wait, you make the machine. You was a part of making right. this machine. Wow. Right. And so from there, that's when I realized that it's not just being around dope MCs, being around dope beat makers. Cause a lot of times you we we take pride in like only wanting to know like the dope, the ghost rider for those <laughs> that right. need ghost. Um <laughs> I, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like there's ghost writers, there's go, ghost beat makers. I never really understood the ghost needing, but wow. I, it's it's a thing that people need ghosts. Boo. Um, <laughs> but if 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 you if you want to have ghosts, right. then you need to know the engineer too. Hmm. Like, the engineer, like Jimmy Iving was an engineer. He's an engineer, yeah. And then he turned into Jimmy Iving. Wow. The engineer, the knowledge that they have, so it went from like being really cool with the engineer, the uh, other beat makers, musicians, like, wow, what do you play? Oh, I play four instruments. Oh, shit, I need to be talking to you all the time. Right, right. Because right. right. Q-Tip, that's my dude for life. When he was like Bob Powers, I'm like, yo, who the fuck is Bob Powers? <laughs> Bob Powers, make sure my shit sound clear. Right? Mm. I'm like, right. he and Motivate was like, yo, that's his engineer. He's shouting out the engineer? <laughs> yeah, see, that's cool. Like, yo. That's cool. There's a lot that goes behind the things that we love, that we adore, that we, like, escape to. Mm. You've always had an eye towards your roots, but also an eye towards the future. And that's why you are the most expensive guest we've ever had, because we had to go buy some Fear of Gods and put this together for you. Yes. Yo, the, these are, these are my favorite fear of gods. Ooh, do it make do it make you say, "Oh my god"? <laughs> <laughs> right, that was a good. That's a good one. That's a good one. <laughs> shout out to the homie Brian for <laughs> shout out to the homie Brian for making these uh, tactical mm -hmm. belts. And as simple as this design seems, we went through a lot to yes. get this done. Yes. But like, for, for a lot of other people, right, when we were putting these shoes together, we're like, oh, we know this moment, we know that moment, let's commemorate that on the shoe. When it came to you, I was like, this guy, is, he knows everything, he's done everything. We just wanna make this shoe representative of how we feel about him, which is look towards the future, right? right? Like, when I think of you, I think of Earth, Wind, and Fire. Mm -hmm. I think of me, hanging out in my Aunt Jenny's house. And I would see, you know, because Earth, Wind & Fire used to do the, do the, uh, the, the gate, the double, the, the double gate albums. Mm -hmm. And it would be like all these scenes of just Egyptology. Egyptian. Yeah, Egyptology. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't even know what this means. I'm four, I'm four or five years old. But I'm sitting there like, this is amazing. Wow. You were one of the first in our culture, to my knowledge, to embrace that. Why was that? I was in the seventh grade, and there was this girl that, like, she sat across from me, and I had the biggest crush on her. It's okay. everything to do with, with your question. Right. So I went and put a note in her locker, like, I like you. Do you like me? Check the answer. <laughs> anyway, she checked no. Uh, but she was like, you know, William, you know, you're like my brother. Oh, you're oh, like she a, friend zoned you. Yeah, she Damn. super friends zoned me. I bet she'll check yes now. And <laughs> no, she cool, like, and, I, and I'm so like open with like, her dad name was Philip. My mom was so proud. Willie goes to school with Philip Beatty's daughter. I'm like, <laughs> wow. Wait, that's how I knew that Trinity Bailey was Earth, Wind, and Fire's daughter. Wow. Right. Earth, Wind, and Fire not only is like my childhood and my mom's favorite band. To me, it's like. It, it's innocent right. and just wonder and dream that a person that that was from a from the projects came to school to like a pretty affluent school. That to me was like going to Disneyland every day. She didn't like me, but <clears throat> I had made this demo. I was like, "Yo, give this to your dad, then." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, and so. She was like, she, I played her my demo back when I was like in the eighth grade. Right. And her brother, Sir, was like, yo, he's really, he's, your friend William could rap. Right. And to, you know, to be taken serious 
by like the daughter of Earth, Wind, and Fire, and and her brother Sir. Earth, Wind, and Fire was like everything to me, and uh, I wanted to learn more, sampling the records, of course. Right. But then, like, what were they inspired by? So I got into Bossa Nova uh -huh. and uh, Samba. And their album covers, to your point, were like, wow, look at this art. Right. You know, why, why is it that all the movies that, you know, reinterpret or go back to, you know, Egypt are not of black people? Right. But Earth, Wind, and Fire is showing Egyptians as black people like right. the hieroglyphics do. Mm. So it was not only, it was also educational. Right. Earth, Wind, and Fire. <clears throat> the representation was important. Yeah. <clears throat> and um, it just, for me, it was your imagination is the most important thing. Right. You know, because if you, whoever made those pyramids, that was the ultra example of the imagination heightened to its fullest to right. be able to materialize it to that extent. And so... You know, I don't. I don't like to limit my imagination based on popular culture's boundaries. Right. right. Young will I am. Picking dudes up to take them to shows in some kind of a car. Was it a yellow car? What? 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 What, what was it? A yellow Fiero. Yeah, I had a yellow Fiero. That was my first car ever. I used to go to this rap contest mm -hmm. uh, called Ballistics, and. I think it was like a year and a half. I I would I won this rap battle. Right. Like every Thursday uh, for a year and a half, and the people that used to go to this club was this guy named uh, DJ AM, rest in peace. Uh, Shifty from a group called Crazy Town. Uh, Soleil Moonfry, Punky Brewster. Mm -hmm. Um. Um. Leonardo DiCaprio used to go to this club. Oh, wow. Uh, Alan used to go to this club. Mm -hmm. uh, another dude by the name of uh, Mike Peretta, his rap name is Evidence from Dilated Peoples, used mm -hmm. to go to this club. Alan's, uh, Alan's production name, producer name is Alchemist. Mm -hmm. wow. Um, wow. But I, I know him as Alan. I know him as Alan because we grew, we all grew up going to this club as teenagers. Right. right. And so uh, Easy E used to go to this club, and that's how he discovered me back when I was 17 years old. Okay, so talk to me about the experience, and I, I want to make sure I pronounce it right. At Band Clan? Yeah, at Band Clan. Right. So, one, I'm like the biggest Q Tip fan ever. Mm -hmm. Okay. And oh, must, we know. I was so inspired by A Tribe Called Quest that At Band Clan is a tribe beyond a nation. And I also liked um, Wu-Tang Clan. So we were a tribe beyond a nation clan. <laughs> 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 so okay. it was like, That's but we were 17, we was, no, yeah, we were 17 years old and we got signed for 10 Gs. To Ruthless. To Ruthless. Wow. And so we split the, we split the money, uh, 33, uh, three thousand three hundred thirty-three dollars down each, the middle, each right. all three of us, and I took my three thousand. I took two thousand of my three hundred three thousand three hundred thirty-three dollars, and I bought a yellow Fiero. Okay. Okay. It was a two-seater. That was like the the whip, <laughs> and I thought it was so like, cause pulling up to the projects, it was like, fucking Willie Dollar, would you get that fucking car? It's like, <laughs> fucking Willie Holmes, fuck that shit, fucking feed me, dog. Right. <laughs> To me, that was like a Ferrari. That's a poor man's Ferrari. Right. And I didn't want to be, be the one to say it. That's a poor man's Ferrari, for real. I, I had that car from when I was at Ruthless to when we got signed to Interscope. Wow. And uh, that, was my, that was my joint. So tell me how that journey went um, from, uh, from a Ruthless to Interscope. So easy. One, he's like, if he never passed away, hip hop wouldn't be what it is today. Mm. No doubt. So he is the ultimate entrepreneur. He set off a lot of what 
he set off what a lot of people then in, emulated right. and, and did their version of. Like, here's Easy, NWA, Ice Cube, Dr. Dre, JJ Fad, right. uh, Terry B, um, Above the Law, Blood of Abraham. I was about to say Blood of Abraham. Right? And then Nissan uh, At Band Clan. We never came out. We was on a shelf, 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 shelf. Wow. <laughs> but, but I recorded two songs with him. One was called Merry Motherfucking Christmas. I was going to say, I, 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 have, I, have, I have that yeah. on the Christmas album. Yeah. Wow. And then, I, then another song called Niggas and Jews. <laughs> Mother Mercy. But the, how open-minded he was. Like, yo, I'm going to sign this Jewish rap group. And I'm gonna sign these, you know, these thrift store rapper dudes that could freestyle their ass off. Okay. And, and dance. So we were some dancing ass, freestyling <laughs> ass. That's what all, that's all we wanted to do was like dance against other folks <laughs> and like and battle folks. And uh, so that was open minded for for like a gangster rap label. And uh, yeah, that was that was my. Uh, I miss that dude a lot. So when he passed away in 1995, we were like, yo, let's start a new group. And this time, let's, let's play colleges around LA. Let's own LA. When you first came in and you first started to find success as a producer, what were you using? Pro Tools. Mm. So you were making beats in Pro Tools? Yeah, you get a kick. <laughs> you... Oh shit! The wave forward. Can you turn up that uh, the the uh, the level on that? Yeah. See the waveform. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So you were doing your beats visual. So then you go. <laughs> you play it back. Be like, and you drag it. Yeah, yeah, got it. Yeah. Consolidate, loop, paste it, got my drum loop. Right. Then I put that back and I loop it for like two minutes. Then I'll play that through the, um, through the loudspeaker and aim the speaker at the needle on the, on the uh, turntable. Mm -hmm. So I get uh, the air movement. Right. Because one time Prince told me, if you make a beat on a computer, it's, it never really made sound, so it's not a beat. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, so I was like, oh, shit. So then I, then I had to move air. Right. So the air, I put the speaker hit in the needle of the, of the turntable, and then the river, reverberation of the needle on the turntable right. created that sonic. So I didn't, that was my reverb. Right. So then I'll print that into the Pro Tools, and I got the and I'll, and I'll get a dirty record, so I get the crackle. Of course. So that if I took the drums out, you could still hear the record going, because right. the needle's picking up the room. Right. Okay. So that became my room mic, the needle. Wow. Then I'm like, yo, then wow. I got a cool little freaking loop, and you're like, wow, that sounds analog. But machined. Right. And then I'll get my like my mini moog. And then I'll get my bass sound. So then I'll put that in. Then I'll go get my clav with the wah. Mm -hmm. Or like a, or a Rhodes. And I'll figure out, take me forever to get my voicings. Like, I guess I got to do one note at a time because I couldn't get the freaking chords right. Right. And so getting the ideas out, working in like eight bar loops, four bar loops, mm -hmm. and then the Pro Tools was my uh, making beats on Pro Tools. So I would go to the studio, people were like, who's your engineer? I was like, I, I, I'm an engineer. Right. What about you? Well, you become, because you're, you're producing, engineering, and recording all at the same right. time. Yeah. So I'll produce the vocals, and then I'll do my vocal. I have my mic right there, and produce the beat, produce the vocal. I just need engineers for like, what type of mic should, should I, be, I using? be using? Right. I I still don't have that knowledge, and I don't want to have that knowledge. I, th I, th I think you've done okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like sometimes knowing too much stops your imagination. Funny that you say that. A lot of times I will um, 
I'm a good ideas guy. I'm not the best musician. Yeah. You get somebody else who's a good musician, you combine them with a great ideas guy, you get magic. Mm. Yeah. You gotta combine the two. That's part of what I, how I feel like me and Caddy work. I'm, a, I'm an ideas guy, right? I can't do any painting, I can't do silk screen, I can't do 3M. No, I, I just tell her, right. yo, right. Make, make this look like that. Right, and I get it done. I want to look at the insoles. Oh, shucks, I didn't even see that. Oh, yeah, peep the insoles out. Yo, what the what? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the future to STEM. Um, you have Caddy who was utilizing certain um, aspects of STEM to make these shoes. Oh, yeah. Right? Um, you've also fought to get young uh, children of color involved in STEM. You've had so many initiatives through the years that have been inspirational. Tell us a little bit about that and why you felt like that was necessary. So I went back to my neighborhood and I started I Am Angel. And I still have my I Am Scholarship program where we send kids to school debt free because that's the last thing you want to do is like send somebody from the hood to college and they graduate with a diploma and debt right. and no way to pay the debt back. So I'm like, it's really important for kids to go to school, especially with this technological world that we're, that we're walking into. We're in the middle of it, but it gets right. even more technological moving forward. So um, I wanted to send kids to college so that when they graduate, they have a skill set to not only fill jobs, but create jobs of tomorrow. So we started our robotics program in the neighborhood and our computer science program. And... I since then we've sent kids to Dartmouth and Brown and Stanford and Georgetown. Oh, wow. And we, st um, I started with sixty-five kids, mm -hmm. and now we serve eleven thousand students in wow. LA. Wow, wow, that's very. I need to step down. Help really me out. Fun. So, Will, that that conversation about the STEM—that's the reason why we put this, you know, logo on the shoe. But I want you to like walk through these logos on the shoe. And we did it in the 3M Reflective, so it's like, it's black, but when you hit a certain way in the light at, at night, mm -hmm. it kind of like bounces off, which is some futuristic type of, if you want to call it that. Some tron -ness. Yeah. Okay. It's the wings um, and the A, but the, the, the angelic wings is metaphorical. So we, we put the wings on it as far as the, and, angelic representing my my grandmother's like connection to um the faith we, we were brought up apostolic okay so it's been in my life angelic um entities and and symbol symbology in my house my mom collects angels if you go through egyptology um you'll see imagery even back then of winged gods, winged deities, winged um, religious beings. Um, and if you go all the way back to Egypt, you know, our, as, as, a, as a modern day society, our main connection or identification with that uh, mythology is the pyramids. Mm -hmm. You played at the pyramids. Mm, last year. Yes. But one, of, one of the reasons we chose this silhouette is because there were pyramids everywhere. Mm -hmm. mm. Like when you look at the shoe, there's, there's, it's, it's a bunch of pyramids. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. um, tell us a bit about you playing oh, the pyramids. Oh no, and, and you, they're fear of gods. Yes, I, I, I didn't want to say, I, I, wanted, I was going to leave that to you. Going from the days of at Band Clan, the Yellow Fierro, um, and being part of the uh, Elliott Underground scene, to then playing the pyramids. Mm. Um, did you uh, did young Will I Am ever see himself doing everything that he accomplished, or that you have accomplished to this point? Because I know that young Just Blaze did not. Young Just Blaze was just trying to figure it out. If I if I if I remember some of the lyrics that I wrote back when I was 18, 17, 18, 19. Right. Like there was this one rap I wrote. It said, uh, "Yo, my man, I got a plan to do it all. I got a plan that none of y'all ever." Thought about because underground niggas don't be thinking on going continental like Lincoln. How can you make moves when you always trapped under? I'm trying to reach the surface to learn more about the thunder. I wonder what really makes the world go round. Not thugs, because thugs go round to bring other brothers down. Wow. I always wanted to like, you know, like go above the surface. Right. And after you reach the surface, you're like, yo, 
what the fuck's up there? <laughs> the whole premise of it is always looking up higher, higher, right. and higher. Right. Always looking then, like, the you, future. You like, yo, what's that mountain, bro? We came from we came from these caves, nigga. Like, yo, what's up there on the top of that shit? Mm -hmm. So then you get up to the top of that shit, you looking down at the valley, you're like, yo, there ain't nowhere else to go. Like, remember we was down there and the nigga said he had a rocket? Yo, why don't we tell that motherfucker to bring it up here and fucking go up out of space? Right. So then you get to outer space, you're like, yo, what up? Like, yo, what's that bright light over there? And the whole thing is to keep on searching mm -hmm. and keep on reaching further. One of the things that I've always admired about you is that you took your, your existence in that circle all the way on, on the other side of the country, it made it work for you. We thank you, we salute you. Absolutely. You. No, thank yeah. you, bro. Like, um, beat making, there's like people that you look up to. I looked up to, obviously, mm -hmm. Dilla. Right, of course. Keys. Mm -hmm. um, you, like the stuff that you did with, what Quali was like, yo, the fuck? <laughs> like when records come out and you're like, oh shit, I gotta go back in the studio. Like my right. sounds ain't right. <laughs> but there was a record that you did, um, the Usher record you did, oh my God, which has saved my ass many times in a DJ set. Yeah, they called me on the, they called me one day like, yo, we need a hit. I'm like, what type of hit? That's like a very vague thing. Right. You know, international. <laughs> international. We need an international smash. I'm like, that sounded like Mark Pitts. Yeah, it was Mark Pitts. <laughs> I was like, International Smash, like starting in what region? Right. What, where is it gonna pick off from? Right. He was like, you know that, do that shit. I'm like, <laughs> I was like, I'll call you, let me call you, I'll call you in a couple of hours. Or, and I remember that like, we, Black Eyed Peas, we just did this show in France. It was a show called Tarata Ta. Mm -hmm. And so we just, and where's, uh, I got a feeling was massive. And I was hunting for an I Got a Feeling. I'm like, yo, man, I need a song like uh, September. I need a song like freaking Cool in the Gang, Celebrate. I need a song that plays everywhere, every birthday party, <laughs> every bar mitzvah, every freaking football game. I need a song like that. And I hunted and hunted and hunted for one of those records and right. finally got it. So I Got a Feeling was massive. And so we're, we're doing the show. And after we do the show, the crowd goes, that's nice. So I'm like, yo, what the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> so I go to the TV host. I'm like, right. excuse me, what's this? He's like, oh, this means they like the Black Eyed Peas. I'm like, yo, <laughs> can you send me this? Right. He's like, since you what? Uh, you guys are recording this, right? He's like, yeah, we are recording this. I'm like, yo, can you send me this? It's your performance. I'm like, no, no, the crowd. <laughs> so he was like, oh, sure, I'll send this to you. Uh, what's your email? So I give him my email, wake up the next day in New York. Right. Mark Pitt says, yo, I need a hit. I need a hit. What right. type of hit? International hit. From what region? You know that shit. I'm like, all right, cool. I'll call you back in an hour. <laughs> and oh, I know whoa. that I have this thing. Yeah, that's crazy. From the thing, I'm like, yo, what if I sample the crowd from I Got a Feeling? Yeah. They responded to a hit. Wait, so, so that, that, hold on, hold on. That's let's, crazy. Let's just be clear. Wow. So what you're saying is... The oh, oh, oh from Usher's Oh My God is a sample of the crowd reacting to y'all singing I Got a Feeling. Yeah. Wow. Lord of mercy, I'm wow. done. So I'm like, wow. stop, stop talking. <laughs> All right, hold on. Where's the QR code? On the bottom of the thing? Yeah. Oh, I, oh you saw I was trying to toss the cat. He's already seen it. <laughs> so take out your phone. You want to find this heart? Can you got the chair? What? Well, so you got it. Y'all got y'all programmed the QR code to take me somewhere? Mm-hmm. Then you press that link. Flow right there. code. Okay, here we go. Meditation doesn't have to be hard. Yo, yo, yeah. Whoa. They don't they don't got my freaking brain wave here, do they? You might have collected some data on you while you were resting in the green room. <laughs> yo, yeah. So wait. Wow, they did. Check that out, bro. You thought I was joking. Yeah, that's crazy. Built by right? science. 15 minutes of daily meditation. Wow, this is dope, man. Yo. So we know you're working on your next project. You gotta go on the road. When you come back, you're gonna be working on something. Um, this chair that that links to, when you're ready, and when you're ready to zone out and get back in the studio and get in your creative mode, all you gotta do is scan that code and 
within a day, you will have this chair delivered to your studio. Ooh. A meditation wait, wait. chair. Hold on, wait, 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 wait. Pre-programmed yep. <laughs> with a bunch of your brain waves yep. and music that will put you in a space that I hope will be conducive to you creating. Nah, you like tripping. Nah, that's that's real. Joking. That's real. No, no, no. You for real, for real? Yep. You gotta give it back when the album's made. Yeah, you, 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 <laughs> gotta, you gotta give it back when we're done. But so when I was on the chair, we were at, we, 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 we we were taking DNA samples. No, no, no. <laughs> we took everything. When I was on the chair, I'm like, wait, they want me to relax, cause my I, I'm getting too many ideas. This is fucking what my we life. Hope, we hope wow. that we hope that this chair brings you endless inspiration. No, no, you supposed to be. I want to make beats for that and shit. And motivation. Yeah. I want to make like freaking like journey, journey vibes to that. I, I, I was like truly inspired on that. So, Will, we want to know: um, Does this shoe match your style? Is this something that you will wear? Hell yeah, what you talking about? Okay, 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 okay. So, if you was to walk into like a sneaker store and you, you know, just daily buying your daily shoes. How much would you pay for these shoes? I really don't really know how much shit be costing anymore. Like, <laughs> I know that feeling. Yeah. I know that feeling. I so need to have that feeling. <laughs> no, no, like, bro, I, I, I'm with you. You can't really put a price on things that are near and dear to the heart. And I think the thing that I love about these shoes is I saw your reaction to them, but then I saw your reaction to the share. And that chair is gonna inspire so much creativity within you and give you peace and relaxation. Absolutely. So we're gonna buy, I'm going off script. He doesn't have to tell us what he would want to pay for these shoes. <laughs> I want to see what you come up with when, uh, after a session of sitting in that chair and then getting to work. Share that experience with me and we call it even. You know what's cool? Sometimes you go on shows and stuff and it's, a, it's an awesome exchange of conversation. Right. I've never been on no show where like you leave with gifts and shit. <laughs> Like, but dope shit, like, right. wow. This is really like, I think I'm gonna like get in the car and like shed a tear and shit. Aww. What I appreciate about you is that, and I'm gonna close it out here, is that you have had all this mainstream success. You've played festivals around the world. I mean, you played the pyramids for God's sakes, but you have never really strayed from your roots and from the things that I fell in love with on the Launch Change Project. Salute to you. Oh, thank thank you. you so much. Oh, come on, bro. Makes me want to know why I'm here, So let me ask dope, you, bro. did we, did, uh, how do you feel about these, honestly? No. I feel like y'all snuck into my wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> and my wardrobe in the future. Right. And, and got me exactly what I would, that I would love. Like, these are, like, Ooh. perfect, down to the colorway, down to the freaking, the the uh, the ever so right. a present blue light right. that came straight out of Tron. Yes, Tron was a big deal. Like I was like, yo, we gotta, we have to go full Tron on this. Uh, what I was really trying to do, but we couldn't. We tried, but we couldn't make it look factory. Because my thing is, I don't want anything to ever look like it's a custom sneaker. Right? Mm -hmm. I want it to look like it came from the factory that way. Mm -hmm. We had this idea. We found. LED thread, like actual thread. And what we were gonna do was try to uh, stream it all around, or um, stream it all around all the scenes. Mm -mm -mm. But it, it didn't it didn't look factory. What I might wanna do is do a do-over season two where we have more time to really try to perfect that idea. Oh yeah, that'd be dope. And bring you back. So you might get, you might be the first guest to get a call back. Well, thank you so much. All right, Blaze. My brother, thank you.